Let's now have a quick look at our course practicalities. First of all, I'd like to remind all of you that this is a six-week course that is worth five credits, which basically means that you are going to be spending roughly 22 hours each week on activities that are related to this course. So this is basically going to be a half-time job for all of you. We are going to have lectures on every Monday. Then there are exercise sessions on Tuesdays and Fridays. And every Sunday we are going to have a deadline for submitting that week's exercises. To pass the course, the only thing you are required to do is to solve our weekly exercises. So there's no exam or anything like that. You just keep solving exercises. The basic idea is that you get points for solutions that are both correct and fast. And the grading is completely based on the number of points you get for these exercises. All course material is available on this website and all exercises are here. When you log on to PPC exercises, you will find there the list of all tasks and detailed instructions of what you are supposed to do in each of them. There you will also find the code templates that you can download. With the code templates, you can then more easily start to develop a solution on your own computer. Typical modern Linux and Mac OS computers should be fine, and you can also use, for example, Linux computers provided by our university remotely. Once you're happy with your solution and you have already checked that it works fine on your own computer, you can upload it for automatic grading. We've got a bunch of dedicated computers that will automatically try to compile your code and run all kinds of tests and benchmarks to see that it works correctly and to see how fast it is. In a couple of minutes, you should see the results in PPC exercises. If all went well, there you will also find a prediction of how many points you should get, assuming you have followed all the instructions and there are no bugs in your code. If you're not happy with what you see, you can retry automatic grading as many times as you want. And then, once you're happy with everything, you can submit it to a human being for the final grading. After the deadline, our course staff will go through all submissions and give feedback as needed. And this is when you will know the final score that you got for this submission. If you didn't follow the instructions or there are some bugs that our automatic tests didn't catch, there may be a point deduction. But in most cases, we will simply grade your submission based on what you got in the automatic grading. If you are not happy with the results, you can simply go back, do further development and resubmit as many times as needed. And if you're happy with everything, then that's all that you need to do. Just one technical detail. For each task, there's a deadline for getting full points. The precise point in time that matters is when you upload your code for automatic grading. If it takes longer to get back the results from automatic grading, it does not matter. You can still get full points for the submission. I'd like to emphasize that you can freely solve any subset of our exercises in any order. Just pay attention to the task-specific deadlines if you want to get full points for them. The only thing that matters for course grading is the total number of points that you get. Accumulate a total of 64 points, one way or the other, and you'll get the highest grade. If you don't have any strong preferences, you can simply follow the recommended path and then 
there will be something interesting to do every week. But you can also have a look at the additional exercises for extra points. And we have also got a contest in which the fastest solutions will get extra points. There will be a scoreboard available, more about it later. Now, many of you have already solved our prerequisite test, but if you haven't done it yet, please do it now. It shouldn't take long to solve, and it will help you to get some idea of whether you have got sufficient C++ programming skills for following this course. And it will also help you to learn the basic use of our submission system. To encourage you to solve it as soon as possible, there is one point available for everyone who solves it correctly by Friday. A couple of words about resubmissions. Basically, you can submit anything any number of times. We don't care if you have already submitted it earlier or not. All submissions and resubmissions will be graded exactly the same way. And for each task, what counts is whichever submission gave you the highest number of points. So, if you want to play safe, submit as early as possible, and you have got the best chance of being able to resubmit and revise before the final deadline. If you need any assistance with your exercises, or if you have got any questions, there are basically two places where you can ask. One is our virtual exercise sessions that are held twice a week. In our exercise sessions, you have got the possibility of having one-to-one -one discussions with our core staff. But the fastest way to get help is to simply ask in our public Zulip streams. We are very happy to answer your questions there, and it would be great if you can also share your experiences of what kinds of approaches work well. If you're uncomfortable asking questions in Zulip with your real name, please feel free to pick a random nickname. Finally, a couple of words about collaboration during this course. You are encouraged to discuss your solution ideas with other students, both in Zulip and elsewhere. However, any code that you are going to submit has to be written 100% by yourself. So feel free to exchange ideas on the level of, say, pseudocode or algorithm ideas. But please be very careful to not do any kind of copy-pasting from anyone else or from any other sources. You are free to use ideas that you find online, but you cannot directly use any code that you find online. The only exception is the code in our course material. If you can reuse some parts of the code from the course material, this is perfectly fine. If you are unsure about any of this, collaboration rules, please ask us to make sure you are not breaking these rules. Okay, here is now a checklist of things that you should do during this week. First, you should have already registered for the course in Audi. Then, you should join Zulip if you haven't done that yet. Everyone who has registered for the course in Audi should have also got a Zulip invitation, but you can also find a link in my courses that you can use to join Zulip. And the final step of preparations is creating a user account at PPC Exercises. Then you need to upload your solution for the prerequisite test by Friday and for this week's tasks by Sunday. There are two tasks with deadlines this week called CP1 and MF1. I'd just like to remind all of you that our grading is a two-step process. There is first the automatic grading phase, and after that you will need to decide if you want to submit 
it for manual grading. So please remember to check the results of automatic grading, revise if needed, and then, once you're happy, submit the solution for feedback and points. I guess that's enough for you to get started with solving our exercises. Please feel free to ask in Zulip if there is anything else you would like to know.